I love that. Um, so I did have one question that came through and they wanted me to ask you, what was one uh, decision that you made at um, the beginning or even just, you know, relatively early on for when you started in financial markets that you are like, thank you, younger self. Good job, younger Rick. Uh, and then I think, you know, what the follow-up will be, it'll be like, what's one that you were like, Rick, maybe we shouldn't have done that one. Um, you know, some advice that if you could go back and give it to your younger self, you would. Yeah. The second question is easier than the first. Um, you know, part of the thing that I'll put, pat myself on the back for was um, saying yes to every, everything that came in front of me. Yes. With enthusiasm, I'm sure. Yeah, so for example, at the Institute for Learning, I had a dream job. It was awesome. So my one advice is don't get your dream job early in your career because it will spoil for the rest of your life. I had a dream job um, I, and I loved it, but but it was relatively limited. And then they asked, hey, do you want to be in charge of this new thing called credit drivers? It's like, what the heck is that? Well, we don't really know. Um, well, what's the future for it? Well maybe two weeks, maybe a month. And, uh, <laughs> or, or, you know, uh, yeah. maybe a nice full career or, or maybe having the entire market blow up in 2008, which by the way, was actually a godsend for me. Um, it, I, I you know, be, because guess what? I was the one person out of the industry who knew what was going on in the industry. So uh, that that's very, very, very valuable. Um, and, and so I would say the one thing I'd pat myself on the back for, and, and I owe my wife a lot of credit for this, okay? Because, you know, we married very young um, and, uh, you, you know, we had two young kids. And, you know, when we left New York, we took a huge cut. I took a huge cut in pay, okay? And, um, and then... Um, you know, going into credit traders, it was a big risk. Mm -hmm. But uh, they they asked me if I wanted to go to Singapore or uh, do credit traders. And um, Singapore probably would have been the more traditional role to take. Yeah. Uh, but I took uh, credit traders, which is something I knew nothing about. No one knew anything Nobody, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And basically jumped off the cliff and, you know, tried to build wings on the way down. And, uh, you know, you referred to it earlier, our, our, our brains, but I would say ourselves um, are more resilient than, than we believe. Yes. And if you have that faith in yourself, developing that faith in yourself, if you learn nothing in school, learn how to learn and learn how to have faith in yourself and learn how to have faith in yourself that you can adapt. So that would be the number one. Now, the second question is actually the reverse of that. Yes. Okay. Um, when I left BMO, I had two positions, again, that were offered to me. By the way, again, none of these were advertised. Uh, both of them came to me. I didn't come to them. Okay. And Which again, shows the power of implicit networking. Again, this was in the days before LinkedIn. Oh yeah, implicit networking, and also that you're interviewing for your next job while you're working your current job. Because yeah. if you're good, people will hear about you and hear about your skills yeah. and want to be attracted. And, and I wasn't interviewing. By the by the way, the the Bank of Montreal job came totally out of the blue. I yeah, yeah. I I never saw that coming. No, but I guess I, sorry. You're like interviewing kind of in, implicitly. Like your your brand is your hard work, and people people hear about you, and people. Yeah, people talk. It's, it's a smaller sometimes industry. People hear about me. It's not always a good. Yeah, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> but um, so uh, basically, I'd gone with the credit traders gig as far as I could see at BMO, and uh, the reality was, is I was looking around in BMO for for something, but uh, two things came to me from the outside, and. Uh, one of them was an easy job that I knew I could do, you know, falling off a horse, okay, blindfolded. And the other one was scary as hell. Mm. And what I did was I took the, the easy job. 
and I will go to my grave regretting that. It's not my podcast, but I have been there, done that, and I hear you. It's yeah. how did that make like when did you realize like when did you start you know quote regretting it or when did you start being like oh gosh? Um, actually, pretty quickly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And that's what led to me ultimately becoming an academic. Okay. Because so, uh, when my wife and I sat in that car, okay, I said that w- we agreed that I would be in academia by the time I was 50. Now, albeit we shifted that time scale forward quite a bit. I'm not that old. <laughs> okay. um, <laughs> most people think I am. Um People think anything over 25 is old sometimes in our audience. So don't just let, let you put that scale there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, and, and, uh, uh, that's when we went to what we said that we we're going to do long-term. Mm. 